Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to yet another Paint Night Live here at Plaid Crafts. I'm Chris Williams, and we are going to have a great time tonight. We're going to paint our red, white, and blue painting. So I hope uh, you all are excited as I am to share this time together tonight. Also sharing this time with us in the studio with me tonight, helping me um, want, maintain both Facebook and YouTube is Caitlin Smith. So let's welcome Caitlin. Hello, hello. Hey, Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> I know everyone's still kind of chiming in, so get in, fasten your seatbelt. We're going to have a great time tonight. I hope by tonight you've already put, uh, got your 12 by 12 canvas and applied your pattern to it. Uh, the pattern was available on Plaid Online on Plaid's website. And if you haven't seen the pattern yet, you can, and you're just watching tonight, you can get your pattern later. There's uh, a pattern here that's been what we call tiled. There's actually four pages here that will print out eight and a half by 11 on your home printer. And once you assemble the four pages, you'll end up with a pattern that looks very much like this. This is a, a 12 by 12 tracing of our pattern for tonight. And I used my tracing and I also used some uh, artist uh, graphite paper. It's kind of like an artist carbon paper, but don't get me wrong when you hear me say carbon. It is like an artist carbon paper. Uh, artist graphite is what I used to transfer my design using an artist stylist. And I think it's okay if we go ahead and go overhead. Thank you, Caitlin. Mm -hmm. I'm going to raise this up to our overhead camera so that you can see I've already got my pattern already on here and transferred. And we're going to go ahead and just dive right in because we've got a lot of painting to cover tonight in about an hour's time frame. So let me set my pattern aside here and we're going to leave this space up here for our uh, hero or our finished sample so that maybe you can watch two um, there. There, that'll fit just perfect at the same time. All right, so let's go ahead and work with our paint colors tonight. You can use the Folk Art Matte Acrylics that are in the Let's Paint Live kit, and those are the colors that I put on the supply list. Or if you have Folk Art Multi-Surface paints, you can use those, or you can use a combination of the both. I want you to have fun with your project tonight, and I will tell you the colors that I'm working with. Let's begin first by getting some true blue out onto our palettes. I'm using a waxed paper palette here. And let me get some of the true blue out. There we go. It's a, it's a really nice medium blue. And I'm also going to get out some wicker white. If you don't have wicker white, you might use titanium white. What we're going to do is we're going to start first on the large container, this one right here. And then we're going to work a little bit on this container. We'll do our background and then we'll add our daisies and then we'll add our leaves and our stems. This one is going to take a couple different coats and glazes of color. So we're just going to go ahead and start in on that one first. I'm going to use a three quarter inch flat brush. I am going to wet my brush with water from that's water here in my container. I'm going to blot it here on my paper towels and I am going to just basically brush mix. I'm going to pick up a little bit of blue and I'm going to go with this dirty brush right into my pile of white and I am going to mix a lighter blue color and just kind of get us started on this blue vase. And once I have a nice light blue mixture, I'll bring this up to the camera so you can see, I'm going to begin working on this large uh, vase and or the floral container and I'm going to work around the stars. I am not going to paint over the star areas. So just kind of use that chisel edge of your brush to kind of paint around those shapes. All right and I'm going to go up to the side here kind of work into the next little star. If you're painting along with me I will tell you just up front that I do have to work at a fairly decent clip, <laughs> a fairly decent uh, amount of time tonight because we do have a lot to cover. I welcome you to paint along, but if by chance you find that this is going too quickly for you and you need to slow down, that's quite all right because this is being recorded tonight, this lesson, and you will be able to watch it again on the Plaid Crafts channel here on YouTube. We are simultaneously or dual streaming tonight. We are doing both Facebook and YouTube. 
I know a lot of people often tell me that they like to just watch the lesson the first time around and then go ahead and begin painting uh, with the recorded lesson and that's perfectly fine. I'm just going to put a little bit of color here in the center. You'll notice here as I am painting this, I'm really letting that chisel edge of my brush do a lot of the work as I'm working around the daisy petals and around the star points and the actual shape of our little vase. So do, you let that chisel edge of your flat brush, and again, it's a very large flat brush. I'm using a three quarter. Let this really do the work for you. And here's the beauty of this particular piece. Our stars for our um, design on this larger vase here are very free form. They are not set to be the perfect uh, six pointed star or even the perfect five pointed star. These are stars that are very folk arty. They're very free form. So if by chance your brush takes you in a different direction <laughs> and you're not able to paint this um, the same star shape as I have given you on the pattern, are we going to worry about it? Absolutely not. We're just going to have fun with this star shape. I'm using the chisel edge in the corner of the brush to get in between some of these little spaces here. There's a part of our points here and I'm also going to use that chisel edge. Notice I often turn my work to make it easier for me. Turned it upside down and I used the chisel edge to kind of color in that vase there from the bottom. Now we're going to let this dry and what we're going to do is we're going to work with the Folk Art Multi-Surface Prussian Blue to kind of really do some washes of color towards the outside edge of this piece. We're going to wash in starting on the edge, blending in towards the centers and kind of leaving our center here with just this light blue wash. But this needs to dry first before we do anything else. What we're going to do next is let's go ahead and get this little container painted. So I'm going to rinse my brush. Again, that's my three-quarter inch flat brush. Rinse it well here in my water in the um, brush basin here. I'm going to blot that brush dry. We are going to paint the smaller little container here. The top rim or band of color is going to be white. The bottom is also going to be white. And the center is going to be our red, which is apple red. So let's go ahead and get a little bit of apple red out onto the palette. I love, love, love apple red. It's such a beautiful, bright, bright, wonderful red color. So, any questions? Nope. Okay, I saw you looking up at me. I thought maybe there was a question. <laughs> I was just going to say bright again. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about some of that white being dirtied. I'm going to just sneak over here to a clean spot of my white puddle. Again, I'm using my three-quarter inch flat brush. Again, I'm going to use the chisel of the brush and I'm just going to go across the top of this little uh, short squatty vase and I'm going to brush down and that's all I'm going to do here on this top little band of color for now. We're just going to get a little bit of white on there. Same thing with the lower band, the bottom of our little short squatty guy. And I thought Caitlin had a question a minute ago. If you do have questions, go ahead and type them in the chat. So either whether you're watching on YouTube or in Facebook or on Facebook. And Caitlin will do the best to possibly answer your questions or pass them on to me. I'm going to rinse that white out. And I'm going to make sure that my uh, brush is completely dry. So I'm going to take a clean paper towel here and be ready to pinch the moisture out of the bristles of the brush. And what I'm going to do now with the apple red, and again, I'm going to still keep working with my three quarter inch flat. I'm not, you can scoot down to a smaller size brush, but I think because we have so much to cover tonight, it would be a good idea to let the big guy here, this three quarter inch flat brush, let him do the work and it'll, your painting will go along a lot faster and quicker. And the pattern is on the website, correct? On the Pod correct. website? Yeah, if you go to platonline.com and you put in the search bar red, white, and blue, that's the name of this painting, the painting will come up. You'll get the supply list as well as the pattern itself. I posted it several times in our Facebook group. If by chance you're joining us from YouTube, 
and you may not yet know about the plaid Facebook page. We do have a Facebook page that's all about learning to paint and it is a learn to paint community. That Facebook page is called Let's Paint with Plaid. So you can go ahead and join that Facebook group and, and find lots of like-minded common people just like you. Who, we're all on our journey to learn to paint and we share lots of free lessons there all the time. So I I did several posts about this particular class and where to find the pattern, where to find the supply list. So if you're joining us and not yet aware of our group, please do take the time to join us. This is also where after classes we often say we'd love to see your work. We want to see you share what you've painted with us tonight. And in doing so, you can post a picture in that Let's Paint community and use the hashtag Let's Paint Challenge, because that's a great way to share your work with all of us. We get to see and enjoy your work as well. All right, now let's start working on this background, and then we'll come back to our blue vase. Mine's already starting to set up and dry. So let's go ahead and the background, I'm not going to do a slip slap technique. We're going to do something completely different tonight, but I'm still going to brush mix kind of like we did right here. I'm going to put some of our true blue in my brush, the full flat of the brush. Then I'm going to stroke up into the wicker white and I'm going to mix uh, uh, just a light blue, maybe even similar to that color. And I'm just going to paint that on all over, almost like a very wispy effect. I'm just painting that everywhere. And then what we're going to do is come back and do some other strokes on top of this when we're done. This is all done. And if you're getting any stroke marks like I have started here, that is perfectly fine. Matter of fact, I kind of like the brush mixture and the brush marks. Tonight, I'm not going to take the time to paint my edges. People often ask, well, what are you carrying that around and over the edge? And the answer is, what I did on mine is yes, I did carry that color over on my edges. But tonight, I think because of our time restraints, I'm just going to continue working like this. And I'm just picking up a little bit of both colors on the flat of the brush. When you start working around either your petals, your leaves, or these little vases, just use the chisel edge or the side of the flat of the brush and very carefully go right around those areas. Now somebody who is a longtime decorative painter will say, why didn't you paint all of the background first, then transfer the pattern, and then paint our vases in? Well, that's a good, very, very good question. And you can do that way. You're that way. Uh, and a lot of people do like to have everything all one color on before you put your pattern down. But in a situation like this where we are painting in lightning speed <laughs> and we have to have our project done in about an hour, not always do you have that time to do that. So it's a good idea just to go ahead and work around some of the elements here when you're painting in this background. And again, you can adjust your colors as you reload your brush. Each time you load the brush, it might not be exactly the same. Again, I'm using my chisel edge. Some areas may be lighter blue. Some areas might be a little bit darker blue because of how you picked up that brush or how you picked up the paint and whether you're using the top of the brush or if you flip the brush around and you're starting to use the bottom of the brush that too can adjust some of these colors. The key thing is to use that three quarter inch brush so that you can cover a good chunk of space here on your canvas relatively quickly. Any questions yet Caitlin? Nope not yet. Okay well, I hope all of you love the color palettes of red, white, and blue. I happen to love, a, it always just reminds me of a pop of color and a really beautiful summertime experience. Love the red, white, and blue. And of course, everyone always kind of wants to think about stars and stripes. Well, red, white, and blue and stars and stripes does give you the hint of a holiday in the summer here for the folks that live in the States. But it also gives you that uh, look without having to do fireworks. <laughs> Caitlin, I don't know about you, but I have a dog who just does not like the fireworks. 
Yeah, my parents had a couple of those dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my little Lucy Lou is just not a fireworks lover. When it thunders, my cat goes and like hides under the sink. Oh no! Yeah. So. But but she'll tolerate fireworks. I don't know. I haven't had her long enough. Oh well, you're gonna out. experience that <laughs> this this uh, year, won't you? Yep. Okay. Let's just keep moving on here. If anyone has any questions, be sure and let us know. The color I'm using is True Blue, and I'm using some Wicker White, my three quarter inch flat brush. I am just kind of painting as I go along, brush mixing, and I am working around the shape of my daisy petals, the shape of the leaves, and I tend to hold my brush, here's a little pro tip for you, a little bit further back on the handle. I'm not holding it like a pen or pencil right up here on the ferrule. Hold your brush a little bit further back and I think you'll find you'll have so much more uh, control of that brush. A lot of times people are afraid of using large brushes because they think that they have to have a certain way to uh, make sure that the brush stroke is doing exactly what you want it to do. <laughs> and so hold it back and hold it upright like this and use that chisel edge and I think you'll find that you'll be able to paint not only quicker, but a little bit more with ease and more control. I'm not worried about the stem lines. The, our little stems are kind of thin. We can always come back and paint them in. So don't worry about that. Uh, the areas that I am leaving uh, without paint, I'm painting around the petals and the leaves. So that's the areas that I would like for you maybe to try and not get paint on right now as, as you're working. Well, I tell you what, if you guys are painting along with me tonight, maybe drop a comment in the um, comment section and just say painting or yes. Uh, I would love to know how many friends are painting along with us tonight. And then maybe, Caitlin, you can let us know if you get any responses. Let's see. It's always fun to know whether folks are painting with us. Well, there are 70 people on YouTube. Uh-huh. That's wonderful. Welcome, everyone. And I'm not sure if it'll tell me for on Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. Okay. I know, I, I said earlier, a lot of times people tell us, well, it's maybe too late in the evening, wherever they live, to begin painting. You know, it's late and they're tired already. They've done their full day's worth of work, and I so get that. I'm glad that you're here. If you are one of those folks tonight, I'm glad you're here with us tonight, just kind of watching. Know that this class is being recorded, and you will be able to paint this at your leisure, um, at your convenience. The recording is going to be saved to the Plaid Crafts Facebook, no, I'm sorry, Plaid Crafts YouTube channel. And so what's the canvas size? This is a 12 by 12. Okay. Good question, whoever asked that. <laughs> I am almost done here with my background. This is probably the slowest part of the project tonight, and I am trying to work as quickly as I can here. Ooh, and it says that there's 51 sets of eyeballs on Facebook. <laughs> Someone <laughs> commented and let me know. Oh, great. Yeah, I think that you, they, they might be able to see it where you can't because you're doing the dual streaming, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. All right, and I just have to bring it down the side of this vase here, and we will have our background on. And I love, I'll show you here upright here in just a moment as I finish this off here. I love that it's very brush strokey, that it's very uneven. That was kind of the look we're going for. I'm going to bring a little bit of white up here to kind of give myself a little cheat to show where the vase ends. And the background begins. There we go. All right, let me hold mine up as I quit playing here. You can kind of keep playing for a long time. 
I'm going to show, show you there is a base of the blue on the vase, my white and red on the short chunky little one, and then an overall mixture of the two uh, colors. Again, that's true blue and the wicker white. And using that chisel edge, I just kind of went around each of my daisy petals very roughly. This is not uh, an exact science because when we get ready to paint our daisy petals, some of the petals will paint right over on top of that blue. So we're good there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and clean. I'm sorry, you have a question? Is that itty bitty spot supposed to be blue? Uh, below? Yep. Yep. Uh, <laughs> it sure is. And thank you, whoever said that. Who said that? Me. Oh. <laughs> I saw it and I was like, ugh. <laughs> I bet she's not even seeing that, right? <laughs> yeah, this is supposed to be blue up in here. And I'm just going to paint that in real quick. I was going to commend whoever it was that said that, so I guess I'm commending you. Thank you for that. Thank you. All right. So now... Everything has a little bit of color on it to begin with on the outside edge and our two little containers. Let's go ahead and get some Prussian blue out. Prussian blue on the supply list is the only color that was on the supply list that is a multi-surface color. But like I said, you can use multi-surface, you can use the matte acrylics. Prussian blue is available only as a multi-surface color. It is a beautiful, beautiful, deep, deep color that is uh, almost like a navy blue, but it's very transparent. So I'm still working with that three quarter inch flat brush. I cleaned the color out. I blotted it dry on my paper towel. And now I just stroked the side of the brush up into the puddle where our um, Prussian blue is. And what we're gonna do is the side of the brush that has paint on it, you can see here there's paint on just one corner of the brush is going to be what's next to the vase itself. So we're going to start on the um, outside edge, and it doesn't matter whether you start the right side or the left side, but keep the side of the brush that has the Prussian blue in it towards the outside of your vase. You can even start here along the bottom if you'd like. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put a little bit of color, just kind of like washing some of that color on, on these outside areas. So I'm going to use the tip of my brush here and I'm going to start bringing some of that really beautiful wash of a dark, dark blue. And I want it to be kind of skippy. When I say skippy, it, look, it might kind of look a little watercolory because I do have a lot of, <coughs> excuse me, water in my brush. And I'm going to just kind of bring it down along the edge there. There's a little spot here between this star and then towards the bottom of that star. And let's not forget this little spot right here. And then I'm going to come up to the top where our little flower petals are going to be hanging over onto the vase. And we're going to go around these flower petals. And I'm using short choppy little strokes to apply this Prussian blue. This won't be the only application of it. We will come back and add another one to richen or deepen these colors and to bring it further into our vase too. But when I'm bringing this around, can you see, especially over here where I started, it looks kind of splotchy. That's the look I'm actually going for. And on this side, we're going to just basically come up right along that edge. And I am going to then come back and short choppy it. And I'm going to continue with that Prussian blue all the way down to the bottom <coughs> of our vase. And if you have any little sections there in the star areas, you want to bring that Prussian blue in there and also down to the bottom. So now what we want to do is we want to start bringing this same uh, brush with, loaded with the Prussian blue right up next to our stars. So we're going to start patting some of that color on around the stars and we're going to go around all of our stars and I'm just going to start darkening a little bit here in the inside and every time you move to a different star or a different side of the same star make sure you move that brush you always want the Prussian blue side of the brush right up next to that white of the star and what's a good Prussian blue substitute again? Um, 
if you don't have Prussian blue, you may not get a color that's quite as transparent as this, but I would think that you could have fun and experiment with uh, Ink Spot. Uh, there's a navy blue in the folk art line. You could use navy blue. Basically, you could use any deep, rich, dark, dark, dark blue. Multi-surface? Uh, or... Multi-surface or matte. Okay. Either one would work. If you have not yet uh, tried playing with the multi-surface Prussian blue and you get the opportunity to play with it or to purchase it somewhere down the road, I highly recommend that you invest in it. It's a good color to have in your uh, painting arsenal. You'll find lots of uses for it. Do you know if true blue is matte or multi-surface? True blue is matte. Okay. I pretty much have gone around most of my stars. I'm just checking and adding a little bit of Prussian blue here and there. You can, when some of these areas start drying, you can even kind of go back over them a little bit more. What you want to do is start emphasizing more of this Prussian blue. When you look at my sample here, there's a lot of Prussian blue here at the base or the bottom and it's working up almost to this little star right here. And then from the outside edges going in, it works in. And then we're just gonna leave almost kind of like a um, highlight here in the center. So once these areas dry, just keep going back over with more Prussian blue. I think I'm gonna take a hair dryer to mine real quick because mine's still a little wet. Excuse me, I'm gonna go ahead and dry this. And now I did not wipe my brush out, but I'm going to re-wet my brush a little bit, <clears throat> add a little more moisture to it. These are just kind of washes or glazes of color that we're putting on. And you can see here in this section where I just went from this star to this star, look at how much deeper that color is now by adding another layer of our Prussian blue. Again, I'm kind of working around my star. And of course, everywhere where I've applied the Prussian blue, I'm going to reapply it again. These glazes of color is what's going to help start making this color nice and bold. And we'll really kind of deepen our vase. And you might find that you might need to do like maybe three different sway, uh, swatches of this blue to kind of get it nice and deep in color. I'm out working my second round now of color. And if you find that you're seeing some brush marks, that's perfect. We want it very folksy. This is not really necessarily a glass vase. Uh, it's more like a container that might be more like Oh, maybe um, a stoneware container. So it's okay for it to look a little more rough and rustic. We don't have to have it look very clean and pristine as though it were a glass vase. All right, now I'm bringing it up underneath at the top of the vase here under our flowers. And one more little section here. A little bit down there. It's getting a little bit deeper. It's looking pretty. Yeah, it looks really cool. I probably could go maybe one more time around, but I think what I'm gonna do now is just let this kind of set up and let's start working on our short little squatty guy right now and I'm going to clean that Prussian blue out of my brush and what I want to do is I want to make um, I'm so sorry I have one color I forgot on this supply list because I you know <laughs> those of you that have painted me you know I often like to outline in black this 
pattern here did not call for any outlining and I also don't have any black on the supply list. But what I want to do is I want to have a little bit of a gray uh, shading on our white sections of the short squatty guy here. So if you have black, grab your black real quick and with some of your white, mix it to make a little bit of gray. Or if you have a gray, medium gray, steel gray, uh, classic French gray, any of those grays, if you have a gray, grab a little bit of that and put it on your palette. What we're gonna do is we're gonna still work with this three quarter inch flat brush. We're gonna load it with the local color or the base color, which is our white. This is wicker white. I just threw out my palette here the classic French gray. Those of you that have painted with me before know that I have fallen in love with this color. I love, love, love classic French gray. And what I'm doing is side loading or using just a corner of my brush that's already loaded with the white into the classic French gray over here. So I have gray just on one side of that brush. What we're going to do on the top band and the bottom band that are already based in our white we want to have a little bit of gray here on the outside edges here and a gray along the bottom. So let me bring that up so you can see that a little bit closer. That's gray on the outside edge and across the bottom. So I'm going to hold my brush that has the classic French gray in it or your, or your premixed gray. And I'm just using short choppy strokes, allowing that gray to kind of be on the side of that little short choppy guy. So we're going to add that gray in and scoot it across the bottom as well. You can even turn your brush this way if you want to put it on a little bit heavier on the bottom. And I'm just allowing that gray to kind of shade that white area. And then let's do the same thing for the opposite side here, keeping the gray to the outside edge of our short choppy little guy. And same thing down here. So that's what we've done now is we've shaded the outside of, on the left side, the outside on the right side, and across the bottom. All right, let's go ahead and clean that brush out. And what we're going to do now is we are going to, um, let's bring a little bit of our thicket out onto the palette. Thicket is one of the colors we're going to use for our green leaves. But we're also going to use that right now to create a deep burgundy color. I'm going to do that all in my brush. So what I'm going to do now is I'm on this red band here. We want it a little bit darker on the edges and dark across the bottom. So it's kind of like the same thing we just did here. And rather than telling you to get another color or a burgundy color, we're going to take our uh, red. And again, that's apple red. And then I'm going to dip just a corner of it into my thicket. And then we're going to come over here and blend on the palette. And that thicket in the apple red are going to kind of brush mix a little bit of a burgundy right on the corner of that brush. Once you have a nice color of burgundy, then we'll do that just what we did. We're going to keep that shading color to the outside edge of our red little vase. I'm going to bring a little bit more in here. And there we have the shading on one side. Now what we're going to do is flip our canvas around and we are going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So it's just a little bit of burgundy <coughs> on both edges or both sides. And then I'm also going to take that across the bottom of this red stripe. Just kind of patting that color on. Again, it's a little bit of our thicket and it's a little bit of our apple red. And can you do this on any medium? Um, any medium, uh, like, uh, is, would someone be asking if they could do this in oils? Oh, I was assuming like a surface, but maybe. Well, let's let, I'd be glad to answer the question, whoever's asking it. Um, if you could just let us know what you mean, if you're talking about the surface or if you're talking about a different type of paint. And then once you can tell Caitlin your, what your real question, or not real, but what, so that we could better <laughs> understand your question. 
All right, now my uh, little short squatty vase is taken care of. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna clean that brush one more time, blot it really well on my paper towel one more time. And then let's go ahead and start working on our flowers at the top and our leaves. So while we still have the green out, let's just real quickly, and I'm gonna keep working with the, the three quarter inch flat because I really wanna get the strokes on quicker. So a bigger brush is gonna do the work a little bit faster. Each of these little petals of the leaves, I should say not petals, but each of these little leaves, you can do almost half of a leaf with one stroke and then half of the leaf, the other half of the leaf with the other stroke and then just kind of fill it in. It does not have to be solid or opaque. We're just getting some color on the canvas right now. So I want you to kind of base coat in, if you will, the shape of these leaves. And then Caitlin, as soon as we have someone telling us what they mean so that we can properly answer their question, let me know. Uh, she rephrased it a little bit. She said, are you using any mediums? Oh, mediums. Okay, I got you. No, I am not. I am using the paint directly as it comes from the bottle. And some of my color, I am intermixing tonight. Some of my paint colors are the multi-surface and some of them are the matte. I am not using floating medium and I'm not using blending gel. Sorry, I didn't understand the question to begin with, but I'm using the paint directly as it comes from the bottle. And I think we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven leaves. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I've got one more leaf to put in. And when you see how quickly you can paint this design using that large three quarter inch flat brush, it just go, your painting time will go along a lot faster with the things that are not as much fun. Base coating to me is not as much fun. I love the detail of things. So I think it's very much worth your while to get used to using as large of a brush as you can. I was taught that early on from my decorative painting days, and it really does make a big difference. How's our time, Caitlin? Um, it is 8.08. 8.08, okay. I'm gonna switch right now uh, to my round brush. We're gonna start working on our daisies, and I'm gonna add another color to my palette. So I'm gonna move my palette down a little bit. Well, I want to have some pure orange on my palette, fairly close to where my, um, Apple red is, and I'm gonna add also a yellow on my palette. And my palette yellow is uh, daffodil yellow. So you wanna get a nice, bright, sunny yellow, and it probably doesn't look so bright there in the shadows. <laughs> a nice, bright, sunny yellow, pure orange, and our apple red is what we're gonna use to work on our daisy petals. And I am going to switch to a round brush. I'm going to use a brush that is a number six round. And I'm just quickly going to block in, not fancy, just getting color on the canvas. No specific rhyme, reason, shape, detail, just blocking in my centers. That kind of gives me an idea of where my color is going to be stroked towards. Okay? Now, I'm going to clean that yellow out of my brush and I am going to blot that brush. Let me hit my hair dryer real quick to make sure my yellow is dry. All right. Now my daisies are all done exactly the same. So once you work on one daisy, if you um, need to stop and work on some other area of your canvas, you'll know how to do the daisies and you'll be able to retrace these steps and create more daisies down the road. So I'm going to fill my brush with apple red. And then what I'm going to do is also fill the brush. Maybe I should move that away so you can see it a little bit better. I've got apple red in my solid uh, round brush all the way around. And now I'm going to touch into where the uh, pure orange is. So I have pure orange on the brush as well. And it's pretty much just the tip. Oh, it's not focusing. There we go. 
just pure orange just on the tip of the brush. What I'm going to do is my daisies are stroked from the outside of the petal stroking towards our yellow center. So I'm going to touch down on the outside edge. This is where I'm going to apply some pressure and as I apply pressure that round brush is going to fan out a little bit. I'm going to start pulling towards the center and lifting at the same time and as I lift those bristles are going to go back together and kind of create a point. So and it doesn't matter which daisy you want to start on. I think I'll start on this one way over here. Everything is pretty much dry, so I don't have to worry about getting my arms in it. I'm going to touch down, apply that pressure, and start pulling and lifting. And you'll see here that I'm going to get a red and an orange in my daisy petal all at the same time by loading my brush with both apple red and pure orange. And some of those colors will streak a little bit, and I'm going to turn my work every time I go to make a brush stroke. And because you're stopping to reload from time to time, each petal is not going to be exactly the same. Some will have more red, <coughs> some may have more orange. But these are the petals for our little red daisies. This is just the first part, so we're just going to kind of fill in by applying the pressure and stroking towards the center. And I'll show you this as I get this last one on. There we go. So look how fun that is so far. Just a good base of our flower. And we're going to move on to the next one. Starting on the outside edge, applying some pressure. And of course you can see the more pressure you apply, the wider the petal or the wider the daisy is going to be. So if you want skinny little petals, less pressure. If you want nice, fat, chunky petals, that's where you apply a little more pressure. So we're just pulling in towards the center. Once you get the hang of this stroke, you can probably do a couple different strokes without having to stop and reload. And there's our second daisy petal already, or second daisy. Let's do our third one here. Touch, apply pressure, and we're pulling towards the center. We have both the apple red and the pure orange. I can see here on mine, I'm seeing streaks of both the red and streaks of the orange. And if it helps you to pull towards you, just constantly turn your canvas. All right, I've only got two more daisy petals yet to do. And if you want to, if you want to uh, maybe paint a little more meticulously, take your time, just do one daisy tonight. You've got perhaps some time tomorrow that you can wait and watch this on the replay one more time and paint along to finish the daisy petals. All right. The red daisies really just kind of make this painting, I think, come to life. They're such a good contrast between the darkness of our um, little crockery bowl here, or vase, I should say. And two more petals. What we're going to do is let these petals dry a little bit before we add the details to our daisies. So we're going to let those dry and set up. Let's move on to our leaves real quickly. And the leaves, I'm going to go ahead and clean that red and orange out of my round brush and set that aside. Let's scoot down to like a number uh, 12 flat brush. I'm going to fill it with our base color, which is our thicket. Our local color of the leaves was thicket. So that's a number 12 thicket on the full, both sides of the flat brush. Then I'm going to take and I'm going to side load a little bit into our true blue. So we have true blue and thicket on that same number 12 flat brush. I'm going to bring the, th the hero up. So I want you to look at the leaves 
And if you'll see the leaves, they're kind of like split on two halves. The bottom half, let's look at this leaf right here. The bottom half of this leaf is going to have some true blue on it. So on each of our leaves here that we think is the lower half of our leaf, so this one right here, this would be our lower half, we're going to come along and put some true blue here on the bottom of that leaf. So I've got true blue and I have thicket. And on every single one of these leaves, we're going to paint the true blue on the dark side. Okay? So just kind of stroke that thicket on along with the true blue, keeping the true blue side of the brush on the darker half of the leaf. Any questions about that? Not about that, okay. but is there anything someone can do if their acrylic paint is getting old? And like, how can they keep it fresh? Use it up. <laughs> Use it up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like someone who works for the paint manufacturer, right? No, um, I would just say make sure that you always, always, always cap your brush. Uh, I'm sorry, brush your paint bottles and never let them open. Because once air gets into that paint bottle, um, that, of course, is going to be the paint's worst enemy is air getting in there and drying it out. So I would just make sure that you fully cap them. And then for me, because I paint so often, I never really have old, old paint. I would just say try and enjoy more painting time and use your paint up. All right, our leaves now have the darker half with the true blue. I did clean that out of my brush. Let's refill our brush with that local color again. Again, that's the thicket. And I'm going to side load into our daffodil yellow because we want to have a lighter green on one side of the brush and we have uh, the thicket on the other side. Your supply list also called for classic green. If you'd rather use classic green and thicket together, that's fine too. But this is going to go on the lighter side of each of our leaves, the yellow that I have in mine. And I'm just going to stroke and put yellow on the leaf. Let me bring that up so you can see closer. So on the light side, or the light half of each of our leaves that we just painted with the blue, we're going to now come back and we're going to add some of our yellow, um, which is made a lighter green here on our brush. And we're going to highlight each of those leaves on the light side with our yellow. So we still have the thicket in the brush. And I am brush mixing and making a lighter green by loading some of that yellow onto my brush. This is a number 12 flat brush. I've um, stepped down when we started doing our leaves. I stepped down from my 3 quarter inch flat. And let's see, I think this one and then the one that's hanging over the vase. Did you call your other painting the hero? I did. Um, someone is wondering why. <laughs> why do we call it the hero? Yes. Because it's our finished piece. It's, it's the one that we're striving to be like. Oftentimes artists will call their finished rendering a hero. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so now my leaves all have a dark half and they all have a light half. I'm going to set that down and I am going to... Um, real quickly use, you could use your chisel edge of your flat brush. Those of you that like to use a liner brush, let's go ahead and connect these and get some stems out here. So I'm going to take my liner brush, um, you have a number one liner, I'm going to thin down a little bit of my thicket, but I'm also going to add a touch of my true blue to it. I want a bluey dark green. And what I want to do with this, and you could even add maybe a little bit of the Prussian blue to that, I really want a nice deep blue-green color. Let's start looking at where our flowers are and where the leaves are. And when you pull a leaf, you want to have a leaf pulled in the middle or towards the stem. So we're going to start, um, <clears throat> well, let's start with this one here and let's just start pulling some of our stems down. So I'm going to look at this daisy here and kind of go... I'll show you. I'm going in between these two petals here and I'm just going to pull down, not into the vase, but just pull down to the vase. And I'm going to pull sideways because I've got so much wet in there. I'm going to kind of make a little bit of a fatness there and then I'm going to pull down. 
and then maybe this daisy is got kind of arcing, so I might come from this spot right here, and I might do a little bit of a curve. And you can even make them a little bit thicker if you want. I, I kind of made more spindly stems on mine. Spindly meaning thinner. This leaf is kind of out here hanging. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring a stem out to it because I want to curve around. And you can either go on top. Well, let's go ahead and go on top of this petal here. And then I'm going to bring it down into that leaf. And then this one, I'm going to bring up into the leaf. And I'm going to bring a vein or a stem into that leaf. <clears throat> now let's bring a stem coming out this way to that leaf. And we've got, let's turn it around this way. We've got a stem coming out this way. And it's going to come right up to the middle part of that flower. And this one's going to pull out from here. And we've got to put a center vein there and a center vein here. And then our little daisy right here, we need to have this one kind of arcing. And up and over and in. So we kind of now have some stems. And we're going to let those kind of set up and dry. Um, I think what we'll do now, let's see... My daisy centers might be uh, okay to move on. I'm going to take my number 12 flat brush. If you want to scoot down to a number 8, you can. I'm going to take that daffodil yellow on the corner of my brush and just kind of put some daffodil yellow back into the centers. And I'm just tapping that brush on that center, kind of getting some color in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to because I have yellow in that brush, I just kind of made a little bit thinner application of yellow on that brush. I'm going to side load into a, just by dipping a corner into my red. And so I've got yellow on the brush, which is my daffodil yellow, and I've got red, which is apple red. Apple red is just on one corner of that brush. With the apple red, I am going to take the apple red side of that uh, brush and I'm going to just pat along. If you think about that center of the, of the um, you can even use a little bit of pure orange. If you think about the center like the face of a clock, <clears throat> from what would be maybe 7 o'clock moving around to like maybe 5 o'clock, we're going to just dance that brush on the bottom of that center. So I'm going to hold it up so that you can see on the center itself there's a little bit of apple red or you could even use your pure orange and we're just patting a little bit of that color on on the lower half of that little yellow center. So that again is your yellow and your red or your yellow and your orange and just kind of patting that on we're not really trying to blend those colors. We're just shading the base of each of those little flowers centers. And that's all I'm going to do with that. And I'm going to let my daisy petals dry a little bit longer before we give some detail to the, that area. Let's start working on the greenery that's coming out of this vase here. Now I did not transfer this greenery on my my canvas itself because I thought we're going to willy-nilly it. <laughs> we're going to wing it. And you can use either your um, chisel edge of the flat brush if that's easiest for you. What we want to do first is pull some stems out. And you can load the brush and I'll show you about loading it in a minute. And you can use that chisel edge to kind of just kind of drag out some different shapes of stems. Or if it's easier for you, you can use your liner brush. Either way is fine. And let's go ahead and just use that mixture that we have already here, which is, again was our thicket and our deep blues. And this is just a guide. Just use that as a guide. If you feel more comfortable to go ahead and transfer those lines on here, by all means, I want you to be comfortable. You do what works best for you. 
So I'm just going to pull some of these veins or stems, I should say, out from our little jar. And we have two different little flowers in here. One is actually just greenery and almost like a little filler greenery. And then the other one is actually a little flower. So I'm going to maybe bring a little bit one down there. And then let's bring, these will be my greenery. Why don't I do the greenery first and then we'll go to do our flowers. So now that we've got some greenery stems, what we want to do to do the greenery, if you look at the greens, there are, is a light side and a dark side. And what we want to do with the dark side is we're going to use the same color that we've kind of got mixed there. And I'm going to switch down to my small little um, brush. And I have a number four, I think it was on the supply list. Yep, a number four flat. And I'm going to go ahead and fill it with that mixture. Again, that was our thicket and some of our blues. And I'm going to use this brush not on the flat of the brush. I'm going to turn the brush and I'm going to kind of smush a little bit. So we're going to use the corner down first on the dark side of our little um, stems here. So I'm going to put a corner down and smush a little bit. And I'm pulling from the stem outward. So I'm just going to touch and smush, touch and smush, touch and smush. And I'm lifting as I'm smushing. And so this color can be done on all of our little green stems that we've done on one side so far. Touch, smush, touch, smush, touch, smush. And you'll notice that one brush load here goes a long way. So I'm going to start here on this one. Touch, smush, touch, smush, touch, smush. And it's just basically a touch, apply a little bit of pressure, and then start pulling and lifting immediately. Touch, lift, touch, lift, touch, lift. And I've got two more little stems here. And one last one here. Now what I want to do is I do want to wipe this color out of my brush. And I want to use some thicket, some, or you could even use your classic green too, whichever works better for you. I'm just going to put some more thicket out. I'm going to use my yellow, my daffodil yellow, and my thicket together and just brush mix a lighter value green. And that is going to be the same technique, same pressure on the light side. I'll bring my hero back up one more time. The other half of these little uh, filler greenery is a lighter leaf. So, and they're kind of paired. So where you have one darker, just go ahead and put the lighter one right next to it. So when I say paired, I mean like straight across. If you think this is the stem, right across equally across on the other side of the stem or the other half of the stem is going to be a lighter leaf. And again, it's just a matter of smushing the corner first and then applying a little bit of pressure and quickly lifting. Very, very simply, simply done. Don't, don't dwell on this. It's just a little touch and go kind of a thing. The last, as you're working from the base of this greenery, working out towards the tip, I will tell you that the last little stroke of a leaf is the tip, and I do that always with my lighter green. So as you're doing that, make that final little graceful tip here at the base or at the bottom of each of these little things. Let that be your lighter green. Okay, now let's go real quickly using that liner brush again, same brush that you either use the chisel edge or your liner brush to make this. Let's go ahead and put our flower stalks in. So here's a great space here I have to put a flower stalk. So I'm just going to pull a stalk or a stem out and then I'm going to pull off a couple little designs from it, almost like a couple little branches from it. And I'm going to do one coming out here and I'm going to pull off a branch. And then we'll do maybe one more coming up this way and then pull a branch. And maybe one more going towards our blue vase and pull off and pull off. 
So that's what I have from the base of our little flowers. Now the flowers are all nothing but simple, simple little dots of color. We're gonna start in the center with a yellow dot and then we're gonna come back around with some green, light green dots and then some final white dots. So when you look at this, you can see that there's a yellow dot in the center. Then we're gonna take our light green and we're gonna dot and then we're gonna come back and dot with white. So you can use your liner brush. If you'd rather use a um, stylist here to do your dots, do that. But just whatever's comfortable for you. And I'm going to just do a couple here on this little flower here. And I've got my yellow in. So let me bring that up so I'll show you up close. There's just a yellow dot at the tip of each of these little flower <coughs> stems. And real quickly, doesn't take a lot. And I think that's all I've got. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush mix a puddle of our lighter green here. Okay. Now I'm going to kind of think of like an oval shape, not a circle around our circle here. We're going to dot. And I'm just kind of going over and retracing my steps a couple of times around that circle. Think of an oval, it's the lighter green, and you're gonna do an oval of the lighter green, maybe trail around that twice. So you want that oval to get a little bit wider the second time around. We don't want a circle of dots around the center circle, okay? This is all done very quickly with a Diddy Dotty. <laughs> Use your paintbrush if you can, rather than trying to do this with a dotting tool or even your stylus because your paintbrush is going to hold more paint and will last longer for this dotting motion for you than just using a dotting tool. This is my light green and I'm doing an oval shape. It can be irregular oval and I'm just lots of little dots around that center yellow dot. And now I want to do pure white dots. So you might want to let that kind of set up and dry a minute before we come back with our white dots. So let's go back to our daisy petals real quick. And we're going to um, take some apple red. I'm going to mix a puddle of color here first. And I'm going to take a little bit of my thicket. And we're going to make that burgundy color between my red and my green. We want a nice deep red. I'm going to go a little bit deeper than what I see right here. There we go. I think we're getting close to it there. That's looking pretty. And now what I want to do, make sure you clean your palette knife every time you use it. I'm going to take that liner brush and thin a little bit of this color down. Just so that it flows nicely from my liner brush. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to bring my hero up so you can see it from our center of the, the flower petals here, stroking out towards the tip. I want you to take a note when I bring it up close of every single flower petal. Look at the daisy petals and you're going to see this burgundy paint color that we just mixed is going to be stroked on two or three little line strokes on every single petal. So we're going to start here in the center and I'm going to just quickly pull. And if you uh, notice that it's not showing up enough for you, take a moment, which I think I want to on mine, and I'm going to make it just slightly darker. I'm going to add a little bit more of my green. You want to make sure that your line work shows up. So this is where you kind of uh, use your um, talents that God gave you, use your brain, and check that color before you go on. You want to make sure it's really going to show up well. So I have a darker mix now, and I'm going to continue on. Oh, it's much prettier now. And I'm going to start from that center, and I'm just with my liner brush pulling some of these little line works out on top of my uh, little daisy petals there. Now when you're pulling your strokes, a couple things to think about is you want those to be flowing with the shape of that petal. So if you're on the right side of the petal, it needs to flow or uh, kind of these little line works need to kind of flow to the right side. 
on the left, they're going to flow to the left. Think of maybe parentheses if that helps you. You want them to kind of curve to the right, a couple straight ones in the center, and then curve to the left. Stop and reload your brush as you feel like you need to. You do not want to have just straight lines or straight sticks here in the center of each of these little uh, daisy petals. This is just adding some little texture to the petal. And it's, you know, when you look at daisies, you often do see them look like they have uh, stripes in them. They're, they, they're not really striped, but they are textured, so it looks like that way. Okay? Liner brush, if you need to thin your paint a little bit. We've mixed up our burgundy. And that, again, was our thicket and our apple red. And we're getting close to the end here, folks. Allow these little lines kind of to flow. Don't make them straight. And you might find it easier to pull towards you, so always change your work so that you can pull nice little lines if you need to stroke towards you. <clears throat> this is done pretty much with light pressure on the liner brush. And this, some, sometimes all these little details just add to the painting to me. As you notice as I'm painting mine, if you're watching tonight, I am doing this pretty quickly and not really worried too much. I'm kind of allowing those brushes to kind of uh, do their thing. That three-quarter inch brush tonight really helped us out using the chisel edge. This liner brush, I'm using pretty much just the tip of the liner brush. I'm allowing the brushes to do the work that they need to do for us. Okay. I've got all of my lines in on each of my petals. Now let's look and focus on the daisy center. I want you to look at all the dots that are around the center. And thinking about this like the face of a clock again, let's think about maybe 10 o'clock going down towards 6 o'clock and then coming back up to either 3 or 2 o'clock. We're kind of doing just a bottom U if you will, the bottom of an inverted uh, rainbow, that's where our dots are all going to be placed. And I'm going to use my liner brush with this burgundy mixture of paints. And I'm just going to touch down and do dot, 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 dot. I'm not going to dot and dot and dot. We're going to tap along. And as you are tapping, some of these dots of the flower center are landing on the center. Some are of them that are going outside the center. Some are falling on the daisy petals themselves. Some of our dots with the pressure as we are tapping are turning out to be a little bit larger. Some of them, as we use lighter pressure, are going to be smaller in size. Do stop and reload your brush as you need to from time to time. And this, again, is just the bottom U-shape or maybe inverted rainbow. And we're just dotting on to kind of add some interest to our flower centers. How are we doing with time there, Caitlin? I know we're probably closer, if not over. It's 8.40. 8.40, we're over, okay. Well, we're almost done. We're almost there. All right, I've got all my burgundy around the centers. Now what we need to do is we need to highlight the top of the center. So let me bring my centers back up so you can see the top. And I have some of our daffodil yellow dots and then just a few little white dots. So let's go ahead and use that same liner brush. I did clean out that burgundy. And what I'm going to do with the daffodil yellow is I'm just going to put a few here and there. Just irregular. There's a close up right there. So we're going to add some <coughs> daffodil yellow on the top. Daffodil yellow around the top. I'm going to pick up a little more paint. And around this one as well. And then we'll come back and we're going to add the white. And once we kind of finish the dots on our daisies here, I think we can go back and finish the dots on our little flowers that are in the red and white pot. So I have done all the uh, yellow, the daffodil yellow, and now I'm going to come back and add a few little white dots. Not many, 
it, the white has fewer dots than the other two colors. We're just kind of accenting a little bit of a highlight of white dots there on top of the yellow area. Some of them might even fall on top of some of your yellow dots. And it's okay if the yellow dots are still wet. Let me bring this up close so you can see. And that little bit of a white just really adds a lot to those flower centers. Now what we're going to do on this, we still have white dots to make on top of our green. So we ended up with white in our liner brush. And now I'm going to do just a few white dots, keeping in mind the shape of the oval. And I'm just adding some dots. Let me do a couple more and I'll raise this up <coughs> so you can see. Don't ask me what kind of flower this is. It's just maybe even a weed. It's just a very small, little, simple, little filler. And let me bring that up so you can see. I added white dots, kind of keeping in that oval shape. Some are a little bit heavy handed, therefore the dots might be a little bit bigger. Some of them are light handed, so they might be smaller. It's nice to see the mixture of the sizes of the dots rather than trying to use a dotting tool and getting the same size dot every time. And when I'm applying these dots, if you're watching, you'll notice I'm doing more of a tapping motion. It's just lots of tapping up and down. It's not tapping and pressing. It's just a lot of little tapping. And you'll also notice if you watched me paint tonight, I don't labor over everything. We're just going to let this kind of be a free form and just kind of let this be your fill in. And one thing we might want to do now with that smaller flat brush that we did our leaves on our greenery here, our little flower stalks need to have a little bit of a leaf too. So here's an example of a flower stalk that's coming out and there's one leaf there and one leaf here. I just put just a couple little leaves in to kind of help fill up those stalks. And <clears throat> I use that same little brush and I just punch, touched, applied pressure, and then kind of pulled and lift. And you can use uh, one of your greens. You can use that green-blue mixture if you want dark little leaves. It's just your preference. And it's just another little section of filler. I think I'll add one more here, too. In there. You don't want to get too carried away. It's really just more just little filler. And now let's go move on to right now everything is kind of floating. Let's go ahead and go back to our three quarter inch flat brush. And what I want you to see here is we do have just a little bit of a table along the bottom here that's all done with our Prussian blue and a wet brush. So I've got <clears throat> a three quarter inch flat brush. I'm going to get it wet, but I am going to blot it dry. So it's just really damp. It's a damp brush. And I'm going to take some of that Prussian blue and work that into the brush. And what I'm going to do is kind of use that chisel edge and just kind of scoot back and forth here at the base of both of our vases. We want them to not be floating anymore. And I'm just kind of bringing that down. If I apply more pressure, my stroke gets a little bit, my, my uh, table length or whatever you're having it sit on is getting a little bit deeper or wider. And I'm just bringing some of that Prussian blue along the bottom there. And then what I'm going to do, uh, oh, one more thing I want to tell you. If you want to, while you still have that brush with your Prussian blue, you don't have to. But if you wanted to go back and even deepen your vase a little bit more, you can add another little wash of your blue on your vase. And just be very careful if your daisies are still wet. But I think sometimes the deeper the blue, the, the prettier it is. So you can do that. And then what I want to do now is I do want to go back to a number 12. I want to make sure it's nice and dry. And I'm going to take just my white, which I'm going to go on the back side of my puddle here so I don't get any other color in it. And I want to retrace the steps of my stars here. Make them nice and bright and white because right now there are there is no paint on the star. The stars were just the white canvas at this point. 
So if you got a little wash of your blue in there, now's where you can kind of clean it up like I just did on that section there. If you want to change the shape of your stars, now remember, they're not perfect stars. They're not intended to be perfect stars. Keep them a little folksy and just make them nice and bright and crisp and white against that uh, blue that you have on there. One more thing we're going to do to our canvas and then we're just about done. Any, uh, towards the end here, any more last minute questions from anybody, Caitlin? Um. Just a repeat question of the size of the canvas. The canvas is a 12 by 12. It's a 12 inch square canvas. If any of you are planning to paint this, if you haven't painted along with me tonight, um, I hope you do have fun with the lesson. The recording will be up available on uh, the Plaid Crafts YouTube channel. So you can then find the recording there. Maybe it's a weekend project for you for the upcoming long holiday weekend here if you live in the States. Um, it's our patriotic 4th of July here. If not, just have fun with it. Uh, if you are not here in the States, I hope you do have fun. Be sure and take a picture of your project and share it here in the group. Use the hashtag, let's paint with uh, plaid. And I say here in the group, I want you to join our group. Let's paint with plaid is a fun, fun group. I know I talked about it earlier. Be sure and use the hashtag, let's paint challenge. We have so much fun there. Come join us. Matter of fact, this Thursday for our lunch and learn lessons, which are free, it's at noon Eastern st Standard Time. I'm going to be teaching again, and we're going to have a really fun red, white, and blue project. So I hope you join us again. And so I think that's about it for our lesson, except for the fact that we're going to now add a, just a little bit of frosting or finishing touch to our design. And that is all of the little speckles of color on the outside edge. And I, as I bring this up, you can see that you can all see the fly specking. That's all done with our true blue and I'm going to use a toothbrush. Every artist needs to have an old toothbrush in their arsenal of brushes. I wet my toothbrush. I got it damp with some water. I blot it on the paper towel and now I'm kind of mixing it with the true blue paint. And what I want to do is I want to run <clears throat> my fingers across the bristles of the toothbrush. Little flecks of color are going to fly out all over onto my surface. So make sure you have something protective down underneath. If you need to put some paper towels or some newspaper around, it's a good idea to do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my finger bristles and I'll do it on my palette here so you can see. Is it showing up? Little flecks of color are going all over, and that's what we want to do. And I put mine just primarily around the outside edges here. So let's say if you want to, um, I don't have to because I've got this on a wax paper palette, but let's say you are doing this on your kitchen table. Maybe put a paper towel down first. And then I'm going to take that toothbrush that's loaded with that wet uh, true blue and a key thing to know when you're doing the fly specking if you're getting big blobs of color you have too much water if you're barely seeing the little flecks of paint you don't have enough water there is a Goldilocks medium here so either adjust with more water or adjust with more paint so that you have less moisture blot on your paper towel if you need to and then just use your fingers to run across the edge here and look at all those tiny, beautiful little flecks of color. You're going to take that all the way around. I did the fly specking primarily just on the outside edge on all four corners, or all four sides, I should say. To me, it just adds another little bit of texture and a little bit of pizzazz. Kind of fireworks without it being fireworks. And I'm going to push this aside. And that is, my friends, Red, White, and Blue. And the name of the Facebook group, again, is... Okay. Are we face on? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the name of the Facebook group, I welcome you to join. I'm Chris Williams. I'm one of the uh, admins on that group. I teach there all the time, as does Andy Jones. And the name of the Facebook group is Let's 
paint with plaid. I invite each and every one of you to find us, take a picture of your work, share it in our group, use the hashtag Let's Paint Challenge. No apostrophe, all words run together. And that way we get to take a look at your work too. We love to be cheerleaders for one another in our group. And I welcome each and every one of you to join us there. Any other questions, Caitlin? Yes. Can they paint it on acrylic paper? Can you do this project on acrylic? Yes, of course. Yeah. And that was the last question. Oh, that was <laughs> great. Well, I hope you all enjoyed painting red, white, and blue with me tonight. As I said, if you do join the Facebook group, or perhaps you're already a member of our Facebook group, tune in Thursday's lesson, our Lunch and Learn lesson at Thursday, and that will be at noon Eastern Standard Time. I get to be, uh, I'm honored to be our lead teacher again uh, for that lesson. We'll do another red, white, and blue, a little different. We're going to do some little birdies that are red, white, and blue. Um, and so we'll have a fun lesson then. So I hope you all will join us. And uh, any other last minutes? Nope. That's okay. it. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in tonight. I hope you enjoyed red, white, and blue. I hope you do take a moment or two and enjoy some time with the paintbrush in your hand and really have a lot of fun. I'm Chris Williams and Caitlin Smith was with us this night, tonight. <laughs> and for both of us, we're just going to sign